بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى Being Friday today, my speech today is about Imam Zaman al -Islam. Now, as it's Muharram, we will hear Imam Hussain al -Islam. We will hear about how Imam Hussain al -Islam would say, Hal min nasrin yansuruna. Is there any supporter amongst you to support us? Ask yourselves, what would you have done to be there for Imam Hussain al -Islam? Wouldn't you have given everything you had to be there and support Imam Hussain al -Islam? to be there and protect the son of Hazrat Zahra well, Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, that the son of Hazrat Zahra Sallallahu is alone now, calling Hal min Nasirin Yansurani. Ayatollah Bahid Khurasani says that Imam Zaman Al-Islam is more qareeb than Imam Hussain Al-Islam was. Imam Hussain al-Islam himself says that I have never seen companions better than these. We all know how loyal Imam Hussain al-Islam's companions were. So we, we often find ourselves, for example in Dayanabe, which we're about to read, in Dayanabe we find ourselves saying, Aina talabu bidam in maktulu da karbala. The whole section of Dayanabe, Aina, 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 where are you? Always asking, where is Imam Zaman al -Islam? There's so many Latmiya and Noha asking, where is Imam Zaman al -Islam? But let me tell you something. Imam Zaman al -Islam, every second, if we do once a week on Friday, we ask where he is, every second he asks where we are. So how can we be there for our Imam? How can we answer his call? The very first thing is to believe in him. You might say, this is strange. We're in a majlis of Imam Zaman al -Islam. Everyone here believes in Imam Zaman al-Islam. But do we not have those times where we doubt Imam Zaman al-Islam? We say, oh, maybe one day he just passed away. We may not tell anyone we have these doubts, but they cross our mind. So I want to give two small references to clear this doubt, inshallah. One of them is from the, the Holy Quran. A'adhu billahi minash shaitan al-rajim. Wa ma kana allahu liyudhilla qawman ba'da id hadahum. Somebody came to Imam Hadi and asked him about the successor after Imam Asfi And Imam Hadi said this ayah and said, you need not worry whether there will be a successor or not and what form he will be in, uh, i.e. whether he will be in occultation, um, about his safety. Because we will not mis Allah will not mislead a people after he has guided them. The same way that Allah sent Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and all of the Imams after, he won't leave us without an Imam. So there, there should be no, no doubt as to whether we have an Imam or not. And from a hadith, a short one, I'll cut it very short because uh, there's a lot to get through. Ahmed ibn Ishaq Ash'ari Ash goes to Imam Asfir al and asks him regarding the successor after him. Now I've cut out most of the story, but the important parts were that Imam Asfir al says regarding Imam Zaman that he is in this nation he in this nation, Imam Zaman, in this nation, is like Prophet Khidr and Zul Varnain. Ahmed asks, what do you mean by Prophet Khidr and Zul Varnain? Zul Varnain? And Imam Asghar al replies, a long occultation. A long occultation. He says, by Allah, he shall be in occultation so long until those that believe in him will turn to disbelief. And no one shall remain believing in him except those who have made a covenant with Allah on our guardianship, which means those people who believe in Rabbalaya. <coughs> and he has fixed faith in their hearts and supported them with mercy. O oh, Ahmad, this is a command from Allah and a secret from amongst the secrets of Allah. So he's saying that this is what Allah wanted. Allah wanted Imam Zaman, that he, what he knew, the Imams knew that Imam Zaman was going to be taken away from us for a long time. But that brings a question, how long and when will he come? What is the prerequisite for Imam Zaman al-Islam coming? So this is 
The first thing, the first step is to believe in him. The second step is to understand Imam Zaman, who he is and what is he going to come for. Now there are thousands upon thousands of false stories and hadiths. We call them Israeli hadiths. That are spread by people like Abu Huraira, mercenaries, not mercenaries of, of weaponry to come and kill people, not this kind of mercenary, mercenaries of the pen. People that quote things, deliberately make up things to misguide the masses. So I'll bring a couple of these misconceptions. The first one, people say, when Imam Zaman, Ajallah Ta'ala, Virgin Shaykh, comes, he will kill all of the kuffar and there will be oceans of blood. The first part of this is correct. Yes, he will kill all of the kuffar. But oceans of blood? What are they trying to do? Make us Imam sound like he's some kind of mass murderer? In fact, the first part was correct, that yes, he will kill all of the kuffar. But what are the kuffar? Who is a kafir? A kafir is somebody upon the hajjat has been completed. Now, we, we all refer to Hindus and Jews and whatever as, as, you know, for example, Hindus and Sikhs as kafir, right? But these people aren't kafir. They're jahil. They don't know the truth. Why? They may have heard about Islam in the news or in the newspaper or or in the media, but they don't know anything about Islam to then be kafir, for the hajjah to have been completed upon them, that they then be kafir, that they then disbelieve. You can't disbelieve in something until you, until you know about it. You can be ignorant of it, jahil, but you can't disbelieve in it until you know about it. And there are very few people that know the true Islam that the Prophet Muhammad wasallam brought and still disbelieve. In fact, the revayat, this was an was a, was a explanation logically. The Rebayat from the Ahlul Bayt al-Islam say that the number of people killed during the time of Imam Zaman al-Islam will be the same as the number killed during the time of Prophet Muhammad How many is this? Approximately 1,400. Out of 7 billion people in the world, approximately 1,400. Second misconception. Imam Zaman needs a large army, and we need to be ready to fight alongside him. We will face many troubles in doing so, and every man, woman, and child must be ready for World War III. Now, this hasn't been said like this, but it's been given in a way that it gives this meaning, that everyone must be ready for a big worldwide war. <coughs> the answer to this is that Imam Sadr al salam first of all, our Imam Zaman al does not need does not need a huge army to be ready for him, for him to come. Imam Zaman, according to the Rabayat, Imam Sadr al-Islam says, the number of companions and commanders, the number of people, that Imam Zaman al-Islam, at the time of his zuhur has, at the time of his zuhur, is 313, the same as the Battle of Badr. This is in Bihar al-Anwar, volume 51, hadith 44. Bihar al-Anwar, volume 52, page 326, and an najm al if anyone wants to go look. So Imam Zaman al-Islam doesn't need a huge army to come. When he comes, yes, he might select the army for himself. But to come, he doesn't need a huge army. So all of these armies claiming to be the army of Imam Zaman al-Islam are nothing of the sort. They might be doing some kind of duty, but they're not the army of Imam Zaman al-Islam. Because Imam Zaman al-Islam hasn't, hasn't asked for this. He's asked for 313 true followers. Why only 313? This brings me on to the third misconception. The Edalat and Islam, which Imam Zaman al-Islam brings, will be so strict that many of us are not ready for it. This is a very common misconception. Many of us won't be ready for the Adalat of Imam Zaman al-Islam. We won't be able to handle the Adalat of Imam Zaman al-Islam. You see, the problem is with these thousands of stories that are being spread on the member of Ahlul Bayt al-Islam, creating confusion and making people doubt Imam Zaman al-Islam, people often find themselves thinking, maybe we're better off if he doesn't come. <coughs> people can't pray for the bottom of their heart. Why? Why can't we pray for the bottom of our heart for Imam Zaman al-Islam to come? Why can't we prepare ourselves from the bottom of our heart? Because we're scared that when he comes, he'll take things from us. That's what we're scared of. People think we'll be better off without him. 
So when we're sitting there saying, Allahumma ajjil la faraj, but in the back of our mind we're thinking, hold on, if he comes, he's going to take my house off me, for example, or whatever off me. We're not really praying from the bottom of our heart. That's not du'a with ikhlas. Why? Not because we don't want him to come, but because somebody has put something in our mind that's made us mis- misunderstand what Imam Zaman's going to do when he comes. And that's why we can't pray from the bottom of our heart. So we have to know him. Now, in order to know him, we have to learn more about him. I've got three stories. I'll try and cut them very short and simple for you. We've all heard of Sofiani. There's a lot of mysticism, a lot of mystery around this character, Sofiani. Yeah? But the, the general accepted thing is that he will come from Sham. He will rise up. He will first be a soldier and then become a commander and rise up the ranks. And he's, he will kill every single Shia. Everyone he knows is, is a Shia, he'll order for them to be killed. Whether they have the name of Ali, Hassan, Fatima, Hussein, any Shia name, he'll order them to be killed. Whether they be a man, a woman, a child, an old person, a newborn baby, anything, he'll kill them. When Imam Zaman al-Islam reappears, Sofiani and his army will meet Imam Zaman al-Islam and his army. And Imam Zaman al-Islam will obviously overpower him. They'll capture Sofiani. At this point, Sofiani comes to Imam Zaman al-Islam and says, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. Forgive me. And yeah, he may mean it. Forgive me, I shouldn't have made this mistake. But Imam Zaman al-Islam won't respond to him. Or just turn and turn his head the other way. He won't say a single word. Now we might be thinking Imam Zaman Islam should kill him for all the wrong he's done. But Imam Zaman Islam is so merciful that he won't kill Sofiani. One of Imam Zaman's com- companions in the army will kill Sofiani, but not Imam Zaman Islam himself. You see, like Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa Rahmatan lil alameen. There is not one place in history where Prophet Muhammad killed someone. Yes, his, himself. Yes, his army did. He himself didn't. There is not one place where we see Prophet Muhammad himself with his own hand killed someone. This is Imam Zaman Another story. I'll cut it very short. Imam Zaman al-Islam, during his Baybat al-Kobra, at one point, he had a, someone in contact with him. And this man in contact, um, the people knew that this man had contact. And they came to him, and they kept saying, okay, you've got contact with Imam Zaman, we want to meet him, tell him we're ready, you know, we're his followers, if he wants to come, we'll stand up with him. So... This companion of Imam Zaman Islam goes back to Imam Zaman and tells him. Imam Zaman turns around and says, they're lying. It's rubbish. Don't believe them. The companion says, what do you mean? You know, I see that they're truthful. They mean it. They're, they're doing everything that they can. Some of these are really pious scholars even. And Imam Zaman Islam says, okay, if you insist that these are good followers of me, I respect that. Fine. This Shabaj on Earth, Thursday night that's coming, call all of them, 40 of them, 40 of the most pious of them, to your house, and I'll meet them there. So he says, okay. He's happy. He goes back and tells the people. He tells all the pious ones, the, the, the best of them. <coughs> so Shabaj on Earth comes. They all come to the house of the companion. They're all dressed up, bringing gifts for Imam, for Imam Zaman Islam. Because they're obviously going to meet their mom, they've got their questions written down, they're ready, they're prepared. The companion comes down, opens the door, and picks one of them to come in. He takes them upstairs. The man going upstairs is thinking, oh, when I meet the imam, am I going to kiss his hand, am I going to bow, what am I going to do? He goes and meets the imam, and downstairs everyone's listening. What's going on? Trying to hear what was happening. No sound, nothing. <coughs> but suddenly somebody sees blood from the gutter. They all stand back. What's going on? The companion comes down, opens, opens the door. Second person comes. Instead of this time them fighting to go first, now it's like, oh, you be his hajab, you know, you go first. So they take the 
He takes the second person upstairs. Again, a few moments of silence. Blood coming down the stairs. Some of the people faint. The rest of the rest of them run away. The companion comes down to open the door and bring the third person. He sees everybody's gone. Now, what had happened was, Imam Zaman al-Islam is so merciful, so caring, and so kind that he had told his companion, bring sheep to your house, put some sheep on the roof where, where I'll be meeting the people, and for every companion that I meet, I'd like to do a qurbani out of honor for these followers of mine. This is what Imam Zaman al-Islam has done. This is how much he respects us. And what did, what did they do? They thought Imam Zaman al-Islam was a killer. They ran away. And the last story is about the Adalat of Imam Zaman al-Islam. And that is that in the, in the Ahadith we have Imam Zaman al-Islam's Adalat compared to that of, not his Adalat, his ruling will be like that of Prophet Dawood. How was Prophet Dawood al-Islam's ruling? During the time of Prophet Dawood, and this isn't some kind of bedtime story, it might sound like one, but it's, it's, it's real. During the time of Prophet Dawood, they had a, a, a rope from the heavens down to the earth. This is a special rope that Allah had. It's like a, a bounty that Allah had sent. And what this rope would do is if somebody was telling the truth, they could hold on to this rope. But if they were lying, they wouldn't be able to hold on to the rope. That's the, that was the special feature of this rope. So he would use this in doing qazavat, in doing judgment between people. Now, one day, one of the ulama of the time, he, uh, he stole some money from someone. And the man that he stole money from found out who it was. So he went to Prophet Dawood and told him, Prophet Dawood, this man has stolen money from me, etc., etc., and then Prophet Dawood sent a letter to the man saying, on this day, at this time, you have to come here for Bezalat. Okay. Now the alim knew, because he was an alim, he knew what this rope, how Prophet Dawood does his judgment and what this rope does. So he sat with his wife and they, they talked about it, they tried to come up with a plan so that he doesn't get caught. And their plan was that what we're going to do is we're going to put the money in a bag and the, and the bag inside uh, a pan, like a cooking pan. What you're going to do he said to his wife, what you're going to do is you're going to take the pan to the man's house and drop it off with his wife at the time. Say that it's a heavy pan, I can't carry it, I'm going to go do some shopping, come back, I'll leave this with you, Amanati, for you to look after, I'll pick it back up on my way home. So that was their plan. So the time came, the day came, the alim went to Prophet Dawood and his wife took the money to the, um, to the man's <coughs> house and left it with his wife. So the plan was going as, uh, okay, it was going to plan. Prophet Dawood asks the man what, you know, what happened. And the man tells him that, look, this alim stole my money, etc, etc, etc. And then he asks the alim, okay, alim, where's the money? And the alim says, I swear the money is in the man's house. Prophet Dawood says to the man, okay, come hold the rope. The man, the, the victim. Come hold the rope. The man comes and holds the rope. And Prophet Dawood says, okay. Now Alim's turn. Alim, come hold the rope. And the Alim comes and holds the rope. Prophet Dawood is sitting there. He's thinking, what's going on here? He says to Allah, Allah, this rope. Has it taken a day off? What's, what's going on? And Allah says, sends down a message to Prophet Dawood saying, no. This Alim, Qalaqa Zashya said, he's, he's played a trick on you. He's deceived you. The real, and then he tells Prophet Dawood where the money is and etc, etc. And it was there that this rope vanished. Ghaib. This rope vanished. Allah took the bounty away from the people. Why? Because the people didn't have the liyakat. The same way that Imam Zaman Islam has been taken away from us.
One last note on the Adalat before I move on. <coughs> because some people say that Imam Zaman al-Islam will come and turn the world upside down. He will take everyone's property as it is all Qasbi and give it to whoever and leave everyone poor and bad -bakht. That's what some people say about Imam Zaman al-Islam. Now the answer is these are, these are stories made up to scare us. So that we don't do da'af for Imam Zaman al-Islam and we don't want to protect for Imam Zaman al-Islam. You see, everything in the world belongs to Imam Zaman al-Islam. And the world has more than enough resources. You think Allah is stingy? That Allah doesn't know how many humans are on the earth? Can't give enough ni'mat for everyone? Of course he can. And he has. But there are people, as we know, who have high positions and take all the money for themselves. We know like rulers and, I don't know, some corrupt businessmen and, and so on. That take all the, the, the earth's resources for themselves and leave nothing for some people. We see whole countries starving. So Imam Zaman al-Islam knows exactly how to distribute all of this so that we can all live in luxury and comfortably. And not only that, not only this, that we will live in luxury and comfortably from a, from a um, financial perspective, if, if that's what some people are scared of, but everyone will trust each other, everyone will help each other, and everyone will care for each other when Imam Zaman al-Islam comes. It will be such, as it stated in Rabayat, that if a brother, a needy brother, comes to another brother and wants to put his hand in his pocket to take some money, instead of the brother saying, no, it's mine, you know, what are you doing, get away, he'll bring his pocket forward and say, take, like this. If a young girl wants to go out any time of the night, she can, without fear of danger. In fact, not only danger, no one will even look at her, let alone there being danger. This is how Imam, this is the kind of world that Imam Zawal is trying to bring.